Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. I know a lot of you use the screw accessory uh, which comes with uh, most of the modern four-door chucks, uh, the wood turning chucks. Um, these generally are used with a very small uh, set of jaws so you don't get much support for the blank and you can greatly improve the performance of these chucks by adding a collar and that bears down onto the body of the chuck. So what you're going to see in this video is how to make one of these. Uh, in fact you'll see two because I managed to stuff up the first one and uh, broke it which was another lesson in itself I suppose. Embarrassing though. This chuck is typical of the many self-centering four-jaw chucks um, in that it comes as standard with the small jaws. These are about two inch diameter. Uh, 50 millimeters and uh, and they have a screw accessory which uh, clamps in now that is a very small diameter uh, to back a large blank uh, it's not too bad on the little one which I'll be using for this project um, but normally it's going to be greatly improved if you had a backing plate so the wider the diameter behind the screw um, the shorter the screw can be and the better uh, support you've got off the chuck. So the idea here is to make one of these and I'm going to do it on this chuck because this is probably um, what all you'll have uh, in your own workshop. So this screw as you can see is much too long um, for this blank so I've got a few discs here which can just sh effectively shorten it. Some of these are pretty ropey little discs. Oops. Now one of the problems when you're winding it on is that uh, the uh, the wood can get pulled out. So I'm just going to take rid get rid of that. Uh, this is a half inch spindle gouge. So just take a teeny little cut there. And that will wind on. Uh, well, I'm at it, I might as well do, I've got to do some bigger ones anyway, so I'll just do that one. And I'll take away this hole just to start up. And the reason I'm doing that is because on the other side the wood's just pulled out a little bit. So, turn that round and take away the the pulled out bit. Doesn't matter if it's not running dead straight, just, that's all we need to do. And then, and then I can just run it straight on. Right, so that doesn't look like very much. I'm just going to true up the outsides of this. Half inch spindle gouge again. can put this blank on and I'll rearrange the camera uh, so you can see what's going to happen after this. This is a piece of uh, unknown hardwood. I think it's Queensland maple. It um, uh, just had to be a board the right thickness uh, which is uh, 20 millimeters is what I was after. So first thing is to true up the side. I'm going to run this at around uh, 16, 1700 RPM. That's the half inch spindle guard lining the bevel up with the direction I want to go. Raise the handle to pivot the tool into the wood. Rotate it very slightly clockwise to get a better shaving and head off to the other end. It's a flat board so I'm pretty well right there uh, but I will just skim it up using a, uh, a, a one inch uh, shear scraper. I'm just going to use the shear scraper flat, but 
normally use on its side. Now I need my larger diameter first. So the mark which I'm going to make with the left needs to line up with the right point. And you get quite good at doing that over the years. Now the measurement uh, I happen to remember of the depth of the jaw, uh, the, uh, the bottom part of the jaw is uh, 7 millimeters. So I'm going to be using a, a 3 quarter inch square end scraper. Just to hollow that out. Oops, there we are. Now that whole thing shifted on the screw. And I can see it's slightly out of whack and I don't know what happened exactly there. Uh, I think what happened was that yeah it wasn't screwed on tightly enough. Um, so this is a not uncommon occurrence. Neither is that. I forgot to unlock the spindle lock. So it's out of whack. True it up. And that way, I'm just softening each corner with the wing of the tool so that uh, I don't cut myself. It's whenever you um, pull the thing slightly off centre, just true it up and then you know uh, if you pull it off again, it's, uh, it's, it's again it's out of whack a bit now. Just see how I'm going here. Five mil at the moment, so I'm going to a little bit more. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit higher, but uh, it will be about right. Main thing to remember here is that the angle between the top of the tool and the surface you're cutting needs to be less than 90 degrees. What they call a negative rake. And you do that by having the rest of the right height and just raise the handle a bit so the tool's tilted down on a flat surface. Check that, that should be fine anyway. So, yeah, bending it slightly large. Now, I need to do the inside one. Now, I'm likely to encounter the screw at some stage. Yep, there it is. Some of you might find this a little bit uncomfortable uh, getting in that close. But the idea is that at this point you need to push right through, in which case you've got a ring flying around, or you can turn it around and attack it from the other side, which is uh, what I get to do here. Right, so that's held on. So I've got two ways of doing this. I can measure it again with the dividers, uh, or I can just come straight in. And just step it out until I get as well as I need. So the jaws are pretty well there. I got the, um, the height more than okay. Um, so really that just needs slightly, you don't want it dead, well you can have it dead flat, it's much better have it slightly thick. So any black will always be on the, uh, bearing on the, on as wide as portion as possible. Um, I can sand it, which I will. 
get my dust extractor on. Bit of uh, yellow, 180 grit. a little bit of a very very thin wispy bit on the uh, on the inner lip of that ah oh, I'm going the wrong way can't believe it <laughs> right One does occasionally stuff things up, but that's a good example of how wood can split when you expand the jaws. You will now see all that again. Uh, this unfortunately is take three because um, take two was out of focus for some reason, which I don't understand. But anyway, here we go again. Half inch spindle gouge. And just touch either corner just so they're less likely to uh, cut you. Skewed scraper. To do that with a straight one, but just easier approach. And make sure it's slightly concave. Three quarter inch square and scraper. I've only got to go down seven millimeters. almost eight so I've just got to make sure that area is flat I'm going to use the uh, the half inch again just a little barrel tool makes uh, this wiring when you get near the screw Two was a near perfect fit. I can hear that it's almost through. And rather than go through, um, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it, it would just mean the, the ring's loose and. Uh, Probably more comfortable to uh, put it on the jaws. Uh, lock the spindle there.
that hole will come out, which is good. Right, that fits rather too well. Oh no, the, uh, no I'm forgetting we've got the larger drawers to come out. So that's just got to go on tight enough so that I can get the get the sender out. It'd be nice to get rid of all that, so uh, I'm just going to ease the whole thing out on the jaws a bit. And uh, try and get it running fairly true. So that's near enough. I'll do this with the gouge. Uh, just so I'm cutting across and we're going to flatten the surface if that's not running true at the moment. So I can now put this right back on the jaws. And uh, just want to dish this very slightly. Make sure the angle between the top of the tool and the surface you're cutting is less than 90 degrees. And that's very slightly dish, so that'll be fine. So, can now put this uh, pushing the bar away so I don't split the thing. And this how to get the screw in again. <laughs> Looking for the flat area. Right, that doesn't quite fit. So off that goes back on and uh, if it doesn't quite fit uh, we've got to try and grip it out on the side here Just hoping this chuck goes out far enough should do I think just is enough The actual jaws are that way a bit, so I can get into here and uh, and uh, true that up fairly easily. Now, the best way I find of doing this is with a skew chisel. Um, I'll use a three-quarter inch. Now, I can poke the the point in, but I'm actually going to use the side, the bevel side, and just ease it sideways. Get a bit of dust coming off. And I can see what's happening looking down at about four o'clock. tricks with these chucks to make them work faster and one is to uh, hold the bar and move the wheel move the hand wheel right that's a shade loose if anything uh, but it will do the job um, unfortunately I forgot to sand it before so I'll now just uh, open the jaws up again And uh, then I can sand 
it. So, we'll do that bit. Need to come down again. Where are we? Put a spacer on. You first get the spacers on. They generally pull the grain out a bit, so it pays to just put a little, just take the center away. Just there. And you turn it around and do it the other side. That rattling is the uh, the collar. And then that's probably still too much screw for most jobs. So what you're best off with, if you've got a face plate, make your own screw chuck. And you'll find the wider the backing plate you have, um, the shorter the screw you can use. And this is typical of what I use for about 15 years for gripping just about everything and it's a number 14 wood screw in the middle and at the back which I hope we can see in here I've got a nail uh, across the slot uh, to stop it spinning. Those of you who saw the flitch video will have uh, seen that screw come loose and causing me a few problems uh, this was how it was fixed. And if you're going the full hog, then you go and get um, uh, a dedicated screw chuck manufacturer one. This is uh, a Vicmark one, and uh, the, the collar comes off, uh, can be turned around. It's called a three in one. Um, it's got a superb screw, and uh, that's the one I would use most of the time. But if you're doing any amount of face work, uh, I regard a screw chuck as uh, absolutely essential. Don't know how people manage without.